The purpose of this video is to describe the special nature of wooded ravines in the west of Scotland. This is so that these important places can be taken into account when considering the location, siting and design of development proposals. Western areas of the British Isles, together with the Faroe Islands, have the wettest climate in Europe. They also have international importance for their mosses and liverworts. Mosses and liverworts are small, non-flowering plants, and there are more species in western parts of the British Isles than almost anywhere else on Earth. We have large populations of some species that are uncommon in Europe, and a few species that are either rare or completely absent elsewhere in Europe. Steep-sided ravines in western Britain are key habitats for these plants. In such wet, humid places on rocks and trees, mosses and liverworts form special communities along fast-flowing watercourses. In this video, we're going to see some of the features that make ravines such as this in the west of Scotland so special, and we're going to see why the species that occur in them occur where they do. This it's coastal temperate rainforest. It's very wet here, with rain falling on a high number of days throughout the year. Winters are mild and summers are relatively cool. It's these factors that produce such a high diversity of mosses and liverworts, which thrive in these conditions. Ravines in this northern rainforest, sometimes called the Celtic rainforest, are particularly humid and are home to species that grow nowhere else in Europe. The conservation importance of these western woods and rocky streams should not be underestimated. These habitats form one of the most notable features of British vegetation and one of our greatest contributions to global biodiversity. Not all watercourses here are this important, however. Some features will make one burn better than others for mosses and liverworts. Birds that are good for these plants tend to be steep-sided, providing lots of places for them to live. A burn with no steep sides is not so likely to be special for these species. At the other extreme, a box ravine like this can be so scoured by water that very little can grow on the constantly pummeled rocks. Burns that are good for mosses and liverworts also tend to be structurally complex. They have lots of boulders, waterfalls and cascades, providing increased splash, humidity and places for plants to grow. Burns without these features are not so likely to be special. Broad-leaved woodland cover is another important feature of burns rich in mosses and liverworts. Woodland retains humidity levels and evens out temperature fluctuations. It also provides more substrates for these species to live on, such as dead wood and bark. An unwooded burn like this is not likely to be important. Factors that determine where a moss or liverwort grows are varied and complex, and they differ between species. Here are some examples of the places where they can be found. This species grows just above normal water levels. Not only does it receive much splash and spray, but it will also spend time underwater during periods of high water flow. Natural fluctuation in water levels is important for a number of oceanic ravine species. Waterfalls and cascades cause a constant splash and mist. It's always wet here, except in the driest of periods, and it's these conditions that this rare liverwort requires. Rocks in these burns cause a modicum of splash and spray, and humidity levels are very high. The larger boulders in the burn only get covered at the highest of flows. It's here that we find some of the tiniest liverworts, such as this aptly named Aphalogenia microscopica. Bankside trees occur above normal water levels. Humidity levels here are high, and a community of small liverworts can often be found here. Structural complexity leads to water hitting objects and splashing onto nearby surfaces. Many species, such as this Vagula aquilegia, are only found in this splash zone. Where high water force and structural complexity meet, such as in waterfall areas, mist can form, which is carried in air currents onto nearby surfaces, keeping certain areas continually damp. These places can be important areas for some of the very rare ravine species. Where 
water flushes down a steep-sided ravine, the vegetation can form great colourful carpets of species. Here, the long fronds of Metzgeria leptinura, a liverwort, can be found amongst cushions of other species. Spates can be considered both good and bad for mosses and liverworts. They can scour the walls of a ravine, preventing colonisation by almost any plant, such as in this water shoot. In less extreme situations, large spates can scour larger mats of common mosses off rocks and open new areas for colonisation by the smaller, more specialist species of ravines. The larger spates will also move gravel and sands around a burn, creating mobile habitats for certain ephemeral species that will be outcompeted in more stable environments. Wooded ravines offer a high, constant humidity. Some species of moss and liverwort are well adapted to drying out and rehydrating. The specialist species of our western ravines, however, are not well adapted to fluctuations in humidity. Water abstraction that modifies some of the water flow characteristics described in this video, such as splash, inundation and scouring, may affect particular conditions that some of our special mosses and liverworts need to survive. We hope this short film has given you a good, albeit brief, introduction to a very special Scottish habitat and some of the species that live within it.